The stiff upper lip was conspicuously missing and the traditional art of understatement gave way to rhetorical flourish. In its two and a half year old economic romance with its former colony and today one of its fastest growing trade partners, Britain has continued to shed away its customary reserve and caution and pushed ahead with renewed optimism and drive. And it was no different this week when the country's Chancellor of Exchequer on his first official visit to India recharged the intensity and purpose of relations. The economic affair, which began with the signing of the Indo-British Partnership Initiative in January 1993 by the Prime Ministers Mr. Narasimha Rao and Mr. John Major, blossomed in November 1993 when trade diplomacy took a new plunge. The personal yacht of Her Majesty, the Queen of England, the HMY Britannia, moored at the Mazagon Dock, Bombay, became the setting for an interaction between 300 eminent British businessmen, chief executives of 120 English companies and their Indian counterparts. If HMY Britannia marked the testing of Indian waters by British business, a year later, the Concord delegation, led by the British Minister of Trade, Mr. Richard Needham, seemed to signal the new heights that Indo-British trade promises to scale in the near future. The 1994 delegation, the largest ever trade mission of the UK Department of Trade and Industry, took part in the high decibel British Technology Week events held in the Indian metros. <laughs> But aiming for the stratospheric heights also requires the feet to be firmly planted on the ground below. And to the visiting British Chancellor of Exchequer, Mr. Kenneth Clark, the Rolls Royce he was travelling in seemed to highlight the seriousness and pragmatism of purpose he brought in tow. Mr. Clark, in his meetings with the Indian Prime Minister and his cabinet members, sought firm assurances from the government that it would put in place essential prerequisites for attracting foreign investment an acceptable stock market settlement system and a legislation for setting up a central depository system. Later in a press conference, Mr. Clark said that in his meeting with the Minister of Finance, Dr. Manmohan Singh, he had also dwelt on the issue of counter guarantees to power projects, opening up of the insurance sector and the basis for foreign private investments in infrastructure. But if there is any emphatic message brought home by Mr. Clark's delegation, it was the underlying the theme of privatization. Of the economy, follow things which we Opening the, the seminar context, on privatization in practice, organized jointly by the Confederation of Indian Industry and British Invisibles, the Chancellor of Exchequer recounted the success stories of privatizing British Telecom, electricity and gas industries. For Indian participants from the public and private corporate sector, the seminar, which was also addressed by Finance Minister Dr. Manmohan Singh, provided a forum to learn lessons from the British experience and also an interface to establish future linkages in the path of shaping India's ensuing privatization. As Mr. Clark went ahead with the rest of his Indian itinerary, which included Calcutta and Bangalore, his message from Britain was not lost on Indian government authorities and economic experts. After all, commercialization and competition are no longer dirty words in the country's liberalized economic and trade climate today. But translating these key words into a grand design and smoothly replicating the British privatization success in the Indian context would be the biggest challenge facing the country's planners and leaders.